What emotions did you go through when you were doing this? The movie? There were so many, right? So initially, like I said, in the beginning of the research phase, it was um, shock, awe, disgust, anger. It was overwhelming. Once I realized the gravity of it and how even um, immigration and then on a political side, how everything tied in, right. it then became very, you know, daunting. And it was like, okay, that's what we started asking the questions. What can we really do about this issue? But then we started talking to survivors of human trafficking. And on our, our film, we have a couple of people who have either had a very close encounter or who had experienced it directly. And when I started talking to those people, it became even more um, important that we complete this project. Like, we had to, right? There was nothing that, we, that, there was nothing that we could allow to stop us from, from telling the story uh, and making it good and making it truthful and, and invoking you know, that emotion. So right. the range of emotions was so broad. It was so broad. At the end of filming, though, Miss Phyllis, we had to take a moment. The last day, it was so emotional. Right, yeah. Because my actors, my actors who came on, and they knew what they were getting to. They did their research before they, they got involved, but they didn't understand the gravity. And, you know, we were talking consistently about what it was going to take from them as creators to be able to pull off these characters. Because some of them played really bad people, and they're really wonderful people in real life, right. you know. Yes. So yes. we had to make sure we had clear communication and that we really were preparing ourselves for that emotional range. On the last day, though, we all sat together, and I believe I, a majority of us, were in tears or just silent and we realized the gravity of what we had just done and the importance we knew it was important but it really hit home that last day right. and that's when we were confirmed that we absolutely cannot stop and so from that point forward with us it was with motivation and that's where we're at right now we are motivated and determined to do our part to make a difference so in your movie um, and I'm not going to like ask 50 questions about it because people need to see it. But one yeah. thing I want to know, in your movie, is there any people on there, um, males, females, or whatever, it didn't matter, that, were act that have actually experienced um, sex trafficking? Yes. So we have some folks that uh, we've got one young lady who had a very close encounter. Um, she resides in the Houston area. So unfortunately, she had a very close experience that shook her to the core. Right. Um, another one of my actresses was traveling, and this again takes us out of the state of Texas, but to the Atlanta airport where there is a lot of uh, Atlanta, where there's a lot of issue with regards to human trafficking as well. Yes. And unfortunately, she experienced um, some things there. Um, so yes, ma'am, we have some folks people on our set or that have partnered with us that have experienced this. Uh, one of the most troubling stories that I've heard so far, there's been several, but one of the ones that kind of I was not expecting, I guess I could say, was right. uh, what I'm calling the accidental trafficker. So uh, one of our, our makeup artists, who is a phenomenal makeup artist, by the way, but he did an art show and dedicated it to the film. Mm -hmm. And through that, he brought in a couple of other local artists that he had partnered with on previous projects. And one of the ladies had talked to us, and she was telling me the story um, that happened to her being that she was in the military and what happened overseas and how she became an accidental trafficker wow. and didn't realize the gravity of what was going on until it was almost too late. So there are so many stories and so many people um, who are connected to our project who have experienced it, had close encounters, um, or have, you know, uh, have never, I've never experienced anything like this before in my life. Right. I just know that um, it's not right. right. You know, at the core of being a decent human being, um, we have to be able to utilize our voice, talent, gift, whatever we've got to be able to help those people who need our help, to be that voice for the voiceless. That's true. When you, when you, um, <clears throat> when you, um, next time you're in Colleen and, and I have some, uh, few days notice, I, uh, went to a, a meeting one day about sex trafficking. <clears throat> this young lady, she stood up. She's in her late, she's in her late twenties right now. And, you know, she said that I was, that she was nightly trafficked right here in Killeen. You know, and then she said it happened when she was started when she was 10. And I'm sitting there thinking when you were 10, I was working for KISD. I'm thinking I was working for the school district when you were 10. Oh, my God. So I, feel, for, I don't know what, for some unknown reason, I felt guilty. I don't know what I did. I did not work at the school she went to at all. But my whole thing was she was in, this happened to her. 
you know, nightly. And I'm like, I didn't even know about it. You know, I was talking to her. She goes, so why you feel so bad? I said, because you were a kid. I was living here. You know, I say, so somehow or another, I feel like it's my fault too. You know, and she was like, really? I said, yes, I feel like it's my fault too. I said, because when you were trafficked, I knew nothing about being trafficked. I said, when you were 10, because she's like 27 now. I'm like, you were 10, I knew nothing about it. When, you know, I said, that long ago, I knew nothing about none of this. And I'm thinking, but she was, and she was talking about when she got arrested, the police charged her with childhood prestitution uh, and, you know, let her go. But she said that nobody asked the other question, you know, why, what, whatever. And at that time, there was no other question. You are a childhood prostitute, you need to quit, boom, 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 and you're out, you know? And she said, school, she would ask some of the teachers, hey, can I talk to you? Well, some of them said, well, yeah, talk to me later. Or, yeah, tomorrow, I don't have time right now. So for her, she was doing it, you know, for her, she was by herself doing this. And she also tells you that um, through her, her family life was not exactly terrific, but she ended up in foster care. And she ran away from foster care back to the guy who was uh, her trafficker. She wow. ran back to him because that's all she knew. So she ran back to him and eventually got out of it all by herself, you know. But I was like, and you lived here. You know, I kept thinking, and you lived here, you know. And she lives not far now from where she was trafficked at. She doesn't live far from there. You know, but when you look at her and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know. So I would like for you to meet with her. Uh, and, and talk to her not to say she could be added to but you know she, she's there you know you can talk to her and because she has a very interesting story and I'm like wow but yeah I, I was apologizing for something I had nothing to do with it but I was like oh my god I feel sorry because you're a kid you're m one of my kids you know I'm, I'm in the village here and I wasn't protecting you because I didn't know nothing about trafficking at that time you know and I went back to research and that word didn't exist then you know, so it didn't exist then, and I'm like, wow. So my thought was, how many other kids then during that time period were trafficked, and it was called child prostitution, you know? And so they were, I see, so all these years, they ended up being mistreated and, mis <clears throat> and you know, arrested for something wrong, and we don't know what trauma happened to them because of that. Right. Right. So I was like, wow. So when your movie will be ready when? So right now we're targeted for the first week in July, and we're working with a couple of different organizations okay. um, that are looking at uh, helping us put together a first screening in Bell County, it looks like, uh, possibly Belton. So we're going to have more information for you soon on the actual uh, premiere of that uh, event. Uh, so I'm definitely going to make sure we get it out to your viewers so that we can get our communities and our leaders involved yes. in having that conversation. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, and then like I said, I'm gonna work on, uh, we'll work on you having it in clean, but also I'm gonna work on um, having it shown at our state convention in um, in, in uh, where is it? our state convention is up near Dallas area this year in October. And it's the first weekend of October, and I'm gonna try to stretch it to see our, our the national convention of the NAACP, which is a humongous event, is this year in San Antonio. And since I am the state education chair, I'm going to see if I can push hard and get it shown there. Because um, that's uh, people from all over the United States are there at our national convention. And it will give, your, one, your movie some awareness, but also it will give everybody the awareness that they've been ignoring. Right. It's, it's, I would appreciate that. And one of the things that we're really excited about, uh, just so you know, and so we'll know for future reference, is we've partnered with several different organizations. Uh, Casey Fraser Drama is actually one of them. So we have yes. a theatrical element now that's being added to our presentation. Uh, we want to make sure that when uh, some of our presentations, it will be appropriate in some formats where we will be able to offer an interactive experience. You think of something like a dinner theater when you go to that. However, this is a, a, uh, an interactive, interactive experience where the viewer or the audience members will be able to really get to see and feel and experience uh, some of the things that are going on. Uh, with regards to human trafficking. So we've got that going um, as well, that partnership that's been formed to be able to offer up the presentation of the story of Red and, and that Descent to Darkness in different formats. And oh, I would like that dinner theater part. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, it's very important. And so then also the team is prepared to mobilize. That's another thing that I, I think that, um, you know, we have to be able to say, you know, whether I'm in Central Texas or I'm in uh, Bastrop, Texas, or I'm in College Station, Texas, wherever I need to be, if there is somebody, an organization that would like to add an element to their story to talk about uh, this issue, 
we're ready to mobilize. We're, we're going to go where we need to go to make sure that we do our part. Well, I'll tell you now, because actually I can officially say it because I am it. You can add Texas State NAACP State Education Chair. You, yep. can, you can add us as a partner because uh, I am the state education chair. And luckily, I'm so happy about that. I don't have to get nobody to vote on it with me but because it is me. But you can add, uh, add me on there as a partner because um, it's important that we're there. Um, and it's important that we're all there because it takes everybody to educate anybody. It really does. It really does. But I like the dinner theater. Okay. Yeah, we've got some different elements that we've contributed to be able to deliver this in so many formats. We don't want to be limited in any way uh, as far as delivering this message. Uh, as I was talking to you about earlier, as far as now we're in that momentum stage where we are motivated. Yeah. And so we have created uh, several different marketing concepts and different designs for this message to make sure that it can be uh, relatable to different ages. You know, right, yes. Ethnicities and so, so on. So. Okay, good. I plan to, I'll, I'll, for Colleen, I'll do the dinner theater. Okay. I like that. Um, and then also, if, if there are folks out there that are listening um, right now that would like information or just to follow the movement um, or to be a part of the movement in any way, and, and they just don't know how or, or they want to know how we think that they could help us right. and other organizations that are doing this, they can follow us on Facebook at Red Film 2018. Can you say that again? Red Film 2018. Okay. That's our Facebook handle. Or they can email us directly at Red Film Movement at gmail.com. Cool. Okay. Good. And then I'll add that um, to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll add that to my page and they can stay there forever. Yes, ma'am. And, and it won't go, it won't go away. And also this interview here we're doing will, um, on Tuesdays, if you go to my kiss, 1031.com and go to my show, which is Community Connections, the show is there and I usually take it and I put it out on Facebook. So yes, people yes. can listen to it. Who didn't hear the show themselves, they can go, they can listen to it. And a lot of people like to do, listen to it when it's on and then they'll listen later because they need to write down all the information that they didn't write down then. Sure, sure. And then what we'll do also, Ms. Uh, so let's go ahead and put a link to that on our page so that people can find it. Okay, great. It as well. okay, I like this. I, I, I like it. I, I, I like it because when we all work together, something gets done. Oh, and I, I'm so glad you said that. I am so glad. Do I have just a minute, Miss Ellis? Yeah, you, you, yes, you do. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I am so <laughs> glad you said that. Um, that is something that is so important to me. When you're talking about unity and things and making and things happen, uh, whether it's the movement, I just want people to keep their minds open. This movement is extremely important, but in all things, it is truly possible, and we are proving this on every single level that you can bring people who otherwise wouldn't have been connected outside of, you know, through this film and through our, our, our actions here that normally wouldn't have been connected, but we are unified behind this cause. We are unified behind eradicating it and doing our part. I have a team of veterans. Oh, wow. Actors, activists, active duty. We've got uh, former police officers, former probation officers. We've got people of varying ethnicities. Uh, African American, Latino, um, Caucasian, Middle Eastern, um, you know, today, this is maybe a few, okay, but they're also, here's the kicker, Miss Phyllis, we're working with Republicans they, and yes. Democrats. Yeah, because it doesn't, it's, ah. it's, it's not, uh, what do you want to call it, it's, it's not a, a party issue, it's a people issue. It is issue. definitely not, it is definitely not. Um, and so that's something as well, like that we wanted to make sure too that this message doesn't get caught up and convoluted and um, in that other nonsense that we are talking about humans, period, humans yes. first and foremost, and that we are a party of the people who have united for this cause for humanity. So thank you for allowing me to say that because that is extremely um, something that we also were very proud of. Oh yeah, because like I said, it doesn't, it, 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 it's not a, a party issue, it's a people issue. That's right. That's right. Uh, and also, um, whenever I talk about it, I tell people the one thing we need to get out of <clears throat> the frame of saying or building is whenever something's coming up, people build a program about it. And I'm like, this isn't a program building issue. You can't invent the pro you can't come up with a program 
you know, to for kids to say, okay, we're going to create this program so kids have a safe place to go. It doesn't work. So, you know how sometimes people want to hide things into a program and say, okay, you know what, we created this program, I'm done now. So I've been telling people this isn't a let's create a program and I'm done now. It, it's not a program thing. It's a, I say it's more of an educational part. And as you can build all the programs you got and kid can still get snatched. So I've been telling people we can't build a program about this and then walk off and go, we got a program sitting over there. All the kids will go because this one lady was talking about a program and I asked her, I said, the program is who? She said, the kids in Killeen. I said, suppose, I said, so the kids who traffic to Killeen, just forget it. You know, she looked at me, she goes, what do you mean? I said, you said you're going to have this a program. You're going to build a program. She goes, yes. I said, for the kids in Killeen. She says, yes. So how will the kids who traffic here, they'll never know about your program. You know, I said, they'll, they'll, they'll never know. I said, so we can't do stuff like that because we're not covering what we think we're covering. You know, I say, so, um, so I sort of, so let's not have a stop step sex trafficking program for kids to go to every week. No. You know, I say, the first thing we need to do is educate the public as to what it is. I say, and, and, and what it is in the raw form, not in the cutesy little form like we, you know, people talk about. It needs to be talked about in a raw form, but I tell people, do not create a program for kids to go to every day and say you did your part because that's, that's, that's not how it works. So I've been talking to that when people say they're going to have a program. I'm like, no, it's not, it's not, that's not the cure-all. If so, we would have that program everywhere. So I'm like, can't do, we need to, my thing is we need to educate people and bring them up. And I always ask people, does a trafficker live next door to you? And, you know, some people say, no, they don't live next door, so how do you know? They say, because I know them. I'm like, okay, okay, but how do you know? You know, and, and we keep, I keep with the how do you know. They go, okay, I don't know. Thank you very much. You know, I so said, that's what I want you to say. I said, because, yeah, I know people next door to me, but do I know they are or not? No, I don't know. I say, so do, am I aware of their surroundings? Yep. I said, I'm aware of their surroundings and everybody on my street surroundings because uh, I know what I could look for that would seem out of place for me that I need to talk about. And I, you know, like, and I go back to the story. Um, I go to me and a friend of mine, we go to work the same way every day. Um, but one day she made me aware of that I wasn't paying attention. I was just driving to work, you know? So she called me, she goes, hey, listen, what about the house we pass every day where the windows are, bro are bricked in? I'm like, the who? She said, the windows are broken. The living room windows are breaking. She goes, yeah, that's kind of weird. Why would you do that? You know, she said, and there are two vans parked outside with no windows every morning. I'm like, so when we all go to, I'm, and I'm thinking, I don't even notice that. You know, so uh, I said, but she said, when we come back home, the vans are gone, but you know, but they're there in the morning. So the next day I drove past, I'm like, wow, the vans are there and the windows are bricked in. Why are you bricking your living room windows? I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird, you know? So I made the call like I was supposed to and uh, those cars aren't there anymore and the vans aren't there anymore. You know, but I was telling her, I'm like, you know what? She said, what? now I gotta really pay attention. I've been telling people, I slept that. I, I was driving to work, you know, wasn't paying attention to that, but she did. You know, she was being the one, hmm, the house don't have windows. And, you know, when I came home and went back the next day, I looked, I'm like, they don't. You know, all the way to work, I'm like, why would you break up your living room windows? Just, that doesn't make any sense. You know, I, I said that, you know, I'm thinking, it doesn't make sense. And there are two vans. Hmm, nah, it's kind of, okay. You know, and I'm putting it all together to, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, don't tell me that we've been letting this go and didn't know about it. You know, so I made the call and so did she, she did too. You know, because she had noticed it before I did. And um, so I've been telling people to pay attention to how many cars go and come. Pay attention to these crazy little things that you think are crazy. They actually might be something. Right, right. So I was like, wow. But yeah, but I'm glad you, you did the your, you did the film, um, the movie. I'm glad you did it. Because it's, like you. I said, it's another way of getting the story out. Yes, thank you so much. Um, it was an honor and I'm... I can't wait for everyone to just experience the way in which we have it set up to present so that they can see exactly um, what this descent into darkness really is all about. Yeah, so people need to really, really see it. And we need to, like I said, stop sweeping things we don't want to talk about under the carpet. That's exactly right. I mean, we have to have those tough conversations. Yeah. It's not pretty. It's not flowery conversation. It's not the most upbeat. But my goodness, people are suffering 
um, we have to talk about it. Yes. We yes. have to talk about it. Um, one of the uh, people that I was talking to, we were engaged in conversation, and there was somebody that was in line behind us that was kind of having, you know, I guess, kind of listening into a conversation. And um, I was telling uh, my makeup artist at the time, I said, I, and this is what was going on. I had this vision of this young woman that was sitting in the darkness, you know, with her knees to her chest, you know, just praying incessantly for help and for someone to rescue her and for someone to see, uh, send someone to come and get her. And that thought was something that I just kept holding in my mind. And then when I got to the point of where I was told I was researching and I was telling him that, you know, it got really daunting and overwhelming, but then I kept going back to that vision of that girl sitting in the darkness with her knees to her chest, crying and praying. And he told me in that moment, he said, you know what? We are the verb to those people's prayers. Right. I said, wait a minute, can you say that again? Yeah. And he said, we are the verb to those people's prayers. That's right. It was so powerful. It so, is. Yeah, so we can all do something, and, and the level of the gravity is understandable, right? How much we can put in and how much time we can devote, understandable. Right. But there is something that every single one of us can do to unify behind this cause. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so now you got my brain working. Because I'm, I'm the project person. Not, I get not. I am the one, like I'm the action one. And when I'm, when something gets into my head, then I'm like, okay, I gotta figure out the action to go to it to make everybody go. Oh my gosh, no, she didn't. Yeah, I did. You know, and, and so I'm a, like I said in January, since that is the month, I'm going to. With and you'll be there too. I will invite you to the funeral, uh, and we can talk about it in in that sort of way. A text of it needs to be buried, and, and we'll talk about why it needs to be buried, but we need to kill it too. Yes, ma'am. My team and I would be happy to continue the conversation with you. Thank you yes. so much. Yes. But I want to thank you for, for, for allowing me to interview you. Yes, ma'am. And it was great meeting you because I was like, yes, okay, fine. You know, because I, <laughs> <laughs> I know that there are different ways that we receive information. You know, some people can look at a video. And, okay, I got it. Some people can see a movie and go, okay, I got it. And some people are have to do all three to get it. You know, they have to read it, see it on a video, you know, whatever, where they're in control of stopping and starting, and then a movie. And some people need all three to get it. You know, so right. with you this way, we have all three ways to say, okay, you know what? You didn't get it this way. You didn't get it this way. Well, here's a movie. We come with a movie and a movie and a movement, and we've got a bunch yes. of people fired up, ready to go to make a difference. All right. So um, the movement is called what now? We're calling it the Red Movement. It's kind of what happened, right? We said we said jokingly yes. it was a movie that sparked a movement, yes. and it's literally what happened. So we're calling it the Red Movement. Okay. And I can find it on. Well, you can find us on Facebook yes. at Red Film Twenty Eighteen. Okay. And if you'd like additional information, uh, we would be more than happy to connect through uh, email at redfilmmovement at gmail.com. Okay, cool. Cool. I like that. All right. Well, like I said, I want to thank you for coming on. And I'll be seeing you soon, I know. And we can sit down and talk more, put our heads together, and become a more powerful group than we already are. And at, you can, like I said, add Texas State, NAACP, State Education Chair. Ooh, that's a lot to say, but that is the title that I got. Um, and my name to part of being part of the movement. Yes. Um, because we are, NAACP, we are, and I am. And so that's it. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are fully. And then what I also did was um, NAACP, we have a corporate advisory council. On a corporate advisory council, there's um, corporations such as HEB, Walmart, AT&T, a lot of them. They're on our, and we meet with them uh, every quarter just to talk about what we're going to be doing, what we're going to say. So first thing I sent out was the video that I have. I sent out the video, and I told him, I said, send it to everybody. You know, and he sent it to everybody, and it was, I got these shocking answers from people, you know. Oh, my gosh, really? Oh, my gosh. You know, and that was good because these are the corporate people who don't, I'm not going to say they're too good to see everybody, but they don't see everybody. You know, they read about it, hear about it, and sometimes it slips by, but I sent it to them 
as a smack in the face, boom, 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 this is what's going on in your state that you're sleeping and not paying attention to or just don't know. So I sent that to them and now I'm going to send the information about the film to them because I want them to um, be a part of it. Thank you, Nicole. So and, it. and I don't know how to ask people anything. I generally tell you what I need you to do. <laughs> I do. I think no is for everybody. I think no is for other people. The word no, I think it's for other people. <laughs> it's rather it's not for me it isn't for me and i don't know what no means anyway no just means i gotta go around you because you don't understand yeah. <laughs> yeah but yes i'm with you to keep the movement going uh and and to make it go and and go and go and go until that 2.2 billion dollars a year business dies it, until it dies but like I said, I want to thank you for coming on the show and talking, and we'll see each other soon. Uh, and also, I want to thank everyone for listening to Kiss Community Connections at mykiss1031.com. But I want you to always remember, you cannot lead a positive life with a negative mind. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye now. <laughs>